Hey, all right. Let's let Ann Carr take it. Good morning, friends. Today is Friday, and we're getting ready for a long weekend. We might not see you again until Wednesday circle time, unless you come to our Tuesday play date. So a long weekend. All right, friends, let's start with our hello song. Hi, Charlotte. If you will do the movements for the hello song, Miles and Mimi, I want you to sit hello, down and do the hello. movements. Can you clap your hands? Hello, hello. Can you clap your hands? Can you stretch your eye? Can you touch your toes? Can you turn around? Can you say hello? Hello, hello. Can you stamp your feet? Hello, hello. Can you stamp your feet? Can you stretch your eye? Hi. Can you touch your toes? Touch your toes. Can you turn around? Turn around. Can you say hello? Hello, hello. Can you clap your hands? Hello, hello. Can you stamp your feet? All right, nice work, friends. Let's go ahead and say hello to our friends. We can say hello to Charlie and Mason. Hello to Aaron and Raul. Can say good morning, Makoa. Good morning, Leo. Can say hello to Lucas and James. Hello to Kartikeya. And good morning, Charlotte. All right, and here with us is also Miles and Mimi from our afternoon class. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at our schedule for today. We said hello to all of our friends. We're gonna check on our calendar. Today we have a new letter of the day. We are gonna go back to our book, Caps for Sale, but this time we're gonna watch a short movie made by kids just like you about Caps for Sale. Then we'll do a very short review of story mapping. Then we'll have to say happy birthday to some of our afternoon friends who have a birthday coming up this weekend. And then it'll be time to say goodbye. We also have some activities that you can do during the long weekend that we'll show you right before we leave. All right. It is still the month of May. Today is Friday and the date is 22, the 22nd of Friday. And we say that 22 is easy to show. We do 10 two times. 10, 10 plus 2. So 10, 10 plus 2 is 22. Today is Monday, 22nd. Woo! It's refusing to stay Friday. All right. Yesterday was Thursday. Today is Friday. And we have a new letter of the day. You can tell me what letter this is. What letter, friends? See that teacher Heidi is also holding up the capital letter. I'm not sure where I put the raise your hand pictures. Oh, Let's see, Kartikeya, you can raise your hands, friend. E. What letter is teacher Carolis showing and teacher Heidi? Q. U, yes. I have a capital and lowercase Q and teacher Heidi has a capital Q. Oh, this is tricky. This is a tricky Q word because it looks like a blanket but it has different patterns made of different fabrics, cloths put together, and it starts with a Q. And Teacher Heidi, I'm gonna spotlight Teacher Heidi, because Teacher Heidi has this Q word at home. It is a quilt. I'm gonna go ahead and tell you that it's a quilt. Look at that, it has different patterns, different colors, and they're all made of fabric that is sewn together to make one large quilt. Some people use it on their bed or for decorations. 
And we saw that on Lama Lama Red Pajama Story, Lama Lama had a quilt when she was laying on her bed. All right. What about this one? What royal person is this? Starts with a Q. Wears a crown. Makoa, what do you think? What is Carol Liz showing? McCoy is not ready. Let's see who else can answer. Charlotte, what is teacher Carol Liz showing? I cannot unmute her for some reason. All right, friends. She sits on a throne, wears a crown, still exists in Europe. Like Leo knows. Leo? What is that? What is Carolis showing, Leo? Starts with a Q. Queen. A queen. Queen starts with Q. All right, can we think at least a few more words that start with Q? Now I have something that starts with Q, Carolis. Oh, I have four of them. Let's see. Who knows what these are? We use them in class to paint, but at home you can use them to clean your ears. Leo, Leo, what did you say? Q-tip. Q-tip. Heidi showed us how to paint with Q-tip the other day. Word. Quick. You're fast. You're quick. And what sound does a duck make? Charlotte. You can do a duck sound. What does a duck say? Louder, Charlotte, so we can hear you. Quack, quack. Yes, and quack also starts with Q, just like a duck. Quack, quack, quack starts with Q. And I know another word that we say when we sing the the song for to get ready for circle. We say voices are hmm, what is this sign for? We say eyes are watching, ears are listening, voices. It's not off, it's quiet. Mm -hmm. quiet. All right, let's go ahead and practice writing the letter Q, and then it'll be time for our show. This is the letter Q. We said this is a capital Q, and it has two curves and one straight line. I'm going to show you what that looks like. It has two large curves, so almost like a circle or an O. And then it has one short line. Hopefully, I get my holding it in the right direction. Yes. Reverse. Woo! Circle. Small line at an angle. That is a Q. Let's go ahead and practice writing our Q. You can write in the air. You can practice with curl list. Right. We said that we draw a circle. And then we add a line at an angle. That's a very easy letter. Circle. And line at an angle. All right, let's go ahead and look at our workbook that we had at school. I kind of started a few already. All right, we said that we make a circle. And we do a line at the angles. Very small line. Let's try one more. We can start at the middle to make half moon, full moon, line. Let's try by ourselves. We said half moon, full moon, line. What about this? Which of these start with Q? 
Does queen start with Q? Well, we just talked about queen for our calendar of the day. So does queen start with Q? You can show thumbs up, friends, so we can see everyone. And so I see Kartikeya is showing. Oh, you first showed thumbs up, Kartikeya, for queen. I see Mimi and Miles. I, Miles is showing thumbs down. Thumbs up. Good job. Yeah. Leo, how about you? What do you think? Queen. Does queen start with Q? She was part of our calendar of the day today. Queen. Makua, what do you think? Uh, yes. Yes. Yeah. What about, we're going to say this is a plant. It could also be leaves, but we're going to go with plant. Does plant start with Q? Leo? Oh, I see Charlotte shaking her head no. And Leo is showing thumbs down. All right, see teachers agree. What about, ooh, question mark. We have a question like, what did you wear today? Does it start with Q, a question mark? This goes at the end of a sentence. Hmm. Let's see. Miles, you are doing a great job sitting, my friend. So what do you think, Miles? Does question starts with Q? I cannot unmute you. Thank you, Hans. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you, Miles. All right, this one is a quarter. Does quarter start with Q? What do you think? Quarter. Quarter is a coin that we use to purchase things. It's worth 25 cents. Kartikeya, what do you think? Does quarter start with Q? Yes. Yes, thank you, Kartikeya. Last one. I think it's in the house, but it's a bird house. Does birdhouse start with Q? Birdhouse. Hmm. Charlotte, what do you think? I cannot unmute you either, Charlotte. There you go. Does birdhouse start with Q? No. I think you're no. shaking your head. You need to talk, no. Charlotte. You need to, to use your words. Good job. All right. Shaking your head, but talk. We said queen, question mark, and quarter. Start with Q. Those are other words that we can add to our list. Let's go ahead and do that. We can add quarter and queen. We have and question mark. A question mark to our list of words that start with Q. All right, friends, the schedule is telling me that it's time to watch our show. And we said that our show is caps for sale and it's kids just like you reenacting the book. They're acting the book out. And you can do that at home. You can retell the book by acting it out.
He walked for a long time until he came to a great big tree. This looks like a good place for a rest. went to sleep. He slept for a long time. When he woke up, he was refreshed and rested. He felt for his cap on top of his head. All he felt was his own shed. He looked up into the tree. And what do you think he saw? On every branch sat a monk. On every monkey was a gray or a brown or a blue or a red cat. Angry. You monkeys, you, you, give me back my cat. You monkeys, you, you must give me back my cat. You monkeys, you, you give me back my cat. Oh, gee, the peddler's angry in the red zone. You can retell and act a story just like the kids in that show. And we talked about that it was based on caps for sale. And we're going to review our story map, how to do a story map. And if you remember when we did buildings, we did the three little pigs. And the story map is part parts of a book. So we would say the book title is Caps for Sale. The setting where the book took place. The book took place, I'm going to write, under a tree. All right, who are the characters in the book? Who can tell me who the characters in the book were? There were two characters in this book. It was just like the movie we just saw, just like the acting. There are two characters in the book. I don't see any hands up, so I will ask Makoa and then Leo. Makoa. Yes. Who were the characters in the book? Caps for sale. Koa. Koa, Koa, Koa. Who were the characters? Who were the story about? Who were the illustrations? What is that about? The peddler. Mm -hmm. The peddler. And there's another character in the book. Who's that? Oh, who's that? Hey, better pay attention. It said the peddler, someone that sells, and monkeys. Thank you, Makoa. Characters are the peddler and the monkeys. All right, what happened in the beginning of the book? What was the first part of the story? Hmm. Leo, what happened first? What happens first? What happened in the story first? Here, I'll hold it up. What did the peddler go to do under the tree? He was sleeping. Yes, so at the beginning of the story, the peddler was sleeping. Good job. Thank you, Leo. So what happened in the middle of the book? Kartikeya, look, what happened in the middle of the book? The three caps. Yes, the monkeys yeah, took the caps. Thank you, Kartikeya. The monkeys took the caps. Okay, so Maya, you will be next. What happened at the end of the book? 
Miles. Oh, Miles is not ready. Charlotte. At the end of the book, did the peddler get all his cats back? Indra, can you unmute her? I cannot unmute Charlotte. Charlotte. At the oh, end yeah. of the book, did the peddler get all his caps back? ¿Se le dieron los gorras a los changos al, al señor? Dile pues, sí. 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 Le dieron Muy bien, sí. Yes, at the end, the peddler got all his caps back. We have two more. One is, what was the problem in the story? And the other one's, what was the solution? What happened? Hmm. What was the problem in the story? Let's see. Janet. You can find that in the middle of the book, the problem. Makoa, what was the problem in the story? Koa, uh, Koa, no more, no more toys. Pay attention. Pay attention. What was the problem? What was happening in the story? What happened to the peddler? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Look at the picture. Look at the illustrations. What happened to the peddler's caps? Come on. I don't know. Caps. I heard in the story the peddler says, You monkeys, you! Give me back my caps. So I would say that the problem of the story is that the monkeys took all of the peddler's caps. All right, monkey took the caps. Now the solution is how did the peddler get his caps back? What was he doing? We talked about playing this game called Mimic Monkey or Imitating Monkey. So how did the peddler get all his caps back? Leo, what do you think? Mm -hmm. How did the peddler get his caps back from the monkeys? For sale. For sale, he had caps for sale. Yes, but what did he do when the, he was sleeping and then the monkeys took his caps? What did he do to get them back? He started telling them what to do and the monkeys were imitating him. And then he did something. He had one hat left, so he... He took his hat off and he threw his cat on the ground. And then what did the monkeys do? What did the monkeys do after? After they copied, they copied the peddler. They mimicked him, they imitated him. So when the peddler threw down his cap, all the monkeys threw down their caps too. So what was the solution? How did he get his caps back? He had them imitate or mimic, copy him, Throwing down his hat. Throwing down the caps. That's how he got it back. All right, friends, that was a great review of how to story map. And story map is a way, something you can do at home too with your parents and your family. It's talking about different parts of a book, like the title is Caps for Sale, the author is Espier. He's also the illustrator. That means the person who draws the picture. And this is we usually don't talk about this a lot, but this is the back of the book. And sometimes the back of the book has a small section that reads what the story is about. Overview. All right, friends, let's take a quick look at our schedule. We said hello. We did our calendar of the day. We said today is Friday and we have a long weekend. We will see you again on Wednesday, unless you come to our Tuesday story play date. We finished our book caps for sale. We saw kids retell the stories and you can do that at home too. We did a small activity. We reviewed our story map and we have some afternoon birthdays. So we would like to say happy birthday to them. In our afternoon class, we have two birthdays on Sunday. Oliver and Israel 
have birthdays on Sunday. Now I wanna show you something that you can do this weekend that one of our afternoon friends, Blake, showed us. He showed us some binoculars that he made out of toilet paper roll and he went out for a walk using them for doing some hunting, looking for some nature colors and some letters. And I went ahead and did the same thing. I painted my toilet paper rolls and I put tape because I didn't have any ribbon. And I used these. Now remember, if you tie something around your binoculars to wear on your neck, you need to be very careful that they don't tie around your neck and that you keep them very long. You wanna make sure that any strings around your neck are nice and long. You can use a binocular and you can go around your house looking for the color of the day. If you remember, the color of the day is pink. I didn't think I had anything in my house that was pink until I saw this huge exercise or yoga ball. And let's see, there's something else that you can do this weekend that I'm gonna show you. I did this with our rhyming words. I went outside and I used chalk to write our rhyming words. I wrote jet, net, wet, let, get, pet, vet. And then I used it kind of a hopscotch. I jumped on all the words as I said them. And you can do that this weekend as well. All right, friends, the time is telling me that it's time to say goodbye. We are all done with circle time. So let's go ahead and do our goodbye book. I know Teacher Ruchi has that and you know all the actions already. See you later, alligator. Chomp, chomp, chomp. Bye bye, butterfly. Give a hug, ladybug. Mm. Be sweet, parakeet. I'm trying still. Blow a kiss, goldfish. See you soon, baboon. Take care, polar bear. <sighs> Cold. Out the door, dinosaur. Stomp, stomp, stomp. So long, King Kong. Uh, and bye, said the fly. Zoop. The end. And fiend. Remember guys, even though Monday it's not a live Zoom, we did a 15-minute Zoom circle time with the number 13 in the shape triangle. So you can go online at Google Classroom and see that in case you're missing us and you kind of want to get a head start in the week. And if not, try all the activities that we do during the week and send us some pictures and we will watch those on Wednesday. Bye friends. Have a good Bye. weekend. Bye. Bye, Bye Charlotte.